affirmation this morning for our message is, I am filled with infinite possibilities. So if we could three times say the affirmation. I am filled with infinite possibilities. I am filled with infinite possibilities. I am filled with infinite possibilities. The question this morning is, why do I feel the way that I feel? Have you ever asked that question? Why do I feel the way that I feel? Now, if you feel good, you probably don't ask that question. But you ask that question when you don't feel good. And today, we're not talking necessarily about our health, although our health is a part of what we're talking about. We're talking about how do we feel within ourselves about ourselves and the emotions and the feelings that are coming out of our minds and our hearts and our lives. That's a good question, isn't it? And uh, when you say, I don't feel well, or I'm depressed, or I'm this, or I'm that, and we begin to let go down that road, we know that in new thought, we have this belief in this tenet of thoughts in mind, create after their kind. And that mind is constantly operating, but it is being influenced by the brain. And the brain gets into lots of trouble. And the reason the brain gets into lots of trouble is because it's always absorbing information. Why do I feel the way that I feel? You and I feel the way that we feel because we have chosen to feel the way that we feel. We've made a choice. It may not be a conscious choice. It may be a subconscious choice. It may be a choice that is a consequence of a variety of decisions and actions. It may be a consequence of sin, which is a word that we don't use in New Thought very much because sin, what does sin mean? It's an, it, it's, it's an error and a mistake. How many of you have made a mistake in your life? Yeah. And so when Scripture tells us all have sinned and come short, that awesome kind of benediction or judgment says, oh my goodness, a sin is worse than a mistake. Because as we weigh ourselves down, and this is not psychological, it is part of psychological, but it is spiritual, and it is consistent with what Jesus Christ talked about in Scripture. When he talked about sin, he talked about mistakes. When he talked about change, he talked about change not in the world, that may be, but he talked about change in our minds, in our behavior, in our feelings. He talked us through the process of a life practically and dynamically lived so that we could put aside our mistakes, put aside our errors, and we could begin to look at why do I feel the way that I feel. His whole ministry and his whole message shouted it. His message was the kingdom. That was, that was his message. If we read scripture 117 times, the word kingdom is there. That is a fundamental teaching that runs through the scripture. The kingdom teach. What's the kingdom teaching about? It tells us that the kingdom of God is where? Within. It tells us that the kingdom of heaven is where? Within. And the kingdom of heaven is something that we come in and out of. The kingdom of God is something that we never come in and out of. We have come to believe exactly what Jesus Christ said we ought not to believe, and that is that God is way out there, and we are way down here, and we've got to cajole him and get him to do things for us, because after all, if we just get enough people to petition him, he'll surely change his mind, and he'll come to his senses and do what we want. Well, the reality is that God's already done what he needs to do, but we don't realize it. And so the more we begin to believe that God is out there, and we are down here, and that he is doing this, and we are doing that, we move farther and farther apart. What did Jesus say? He said that he did everything because who dwelled within him? The Father. And he said he and the Father are working always. So that was coming forth from Jesus. But what the wonderful thing was that he wasn't talking about just Jesus of Nazareth. He was talking about everybody. And he was saying, the kingdom indwells you, God indwells you, God will bring forth in your life and in your mind and in your heart the way, the truth, and the life. We feel the way that we feel 
because of the way that we feel and have thoughts and understanding about God and how we have thoughts and feelings about those around us. Jesus said it simply that we should love God and love who else? Our neighbors as ourselves. God, our neighbors, and us. Who is that? Everybody. It isn't, it isn't a denomination. It isn't a group. It isn't a race. It isn't a nation. Everybody. Everybody. And so if that's true, then the ideas that we have about others and ourselves also determines the reason that we feel the way we feel. And even though scripture tells us over and over again that the kingdom indwells us, we tell ourselves that God's out there and we're down here. And we are separated. And we're not only separated from God, but we're separated from each other. And the reality is we're not. We're all connected. And we're all connected because all of life is universally connected. So why do I feel the way that I feel? You and I feel the way that we feel because of the way that we feel about God, the way that we feel about ourselves, the way that we feel about other people, and the way that we feel about the world. Now, the world, there is, an, there is something for you. Because how many times do we ever say, this is a great world in which we live. It's magnificent and wonderful. Instead, what we hear and what we read and what we say so often is, this is a terrible place and awful things are happening here. But is it? Of course not. For heaven's sakes, of course not. Look outside. Look at life. Look at the world. We are in the best place that we have ever been. We have more goods, more services, more opportunities. And what's the affirmation? I am filled with infinite possibilities. And who is filled with infinite possibilities? You and me and everyone. We are filled with infinite possibilities. And there has never been a time on planet Earth when we were so freely invited to understand that about everyone and everything. The life in this world today is so magnificent and wonderful, and yet we don't want to say it, we don't want to admit it, and we don't want to embrace it, and we don't want to acknowledge its manifestation. It has some faults, it has some mistakes, but it is wonderful and magnificent. So how do you feel about God? How do you feel about yourself? How do you feel about your other people, your neighbors? And how do you feel about the world? And therein lies the answer to the questions, why do I feel the way that I feel? And that question and that affirmation is scripturally based foundation teaching of Christianity and every major faith denomination around the world. All of the people around us are good and wonderful and magnificent, created in the likeness and image of God. And the indwelling Christ that we talk about, or the indwelling divine that we would talk about, indwells everybody, regardless of whether they demonstrate it. And the world is a wonderful, magnificent place. And it is getting better every single day. And as we understand the reality and truth of God indwelling us, guiding us and directing us, if we would just get out of the way and let him do it, we would feel a lot better. If we thought that everybody is okay and they just have a little tweaking to be done, and not by us necessarily, but for the most part, everybody is good and okay. And we could get over the ideas and the thoughts that we have about our neighbors and our family and our friends and different races and nationalities and different religions and different, if we get over that, we'd feel better. And if we would get a right understanding of this world, we would feel better. And what did Mary Baker Eddy tell us? We should see beyond appearances. That we should see rightly, that we should see truly, and that we should see what is real and not what is false. And that's what Jesus said. And that's what our spirituality tells us. And so it's a beautiful world. Everyone around us is magnificent. We are magnificent and wonderful. And God is here with us and guides us and directs us in all of the choices that we make. And if we let that happen, how do we feel? Good, good. And when we don't, what do we do about it? We change our way of thinking. 
And how do we change our way of thinking? We change the way that we think about God, about the world, about ourselves, and about our neighbors. And therein lies the answer to that question. The good news is that we are created to see beyond the appearances of the negativity, of the suffering, of the unhappiness. Not to deny it, but to see beyond it. And to have right thinking and right mind and the right thinking and understanding that comes from divine mind and infinite intelligence tells us that the world is wonderful, that we are wonderful, and that God is ever present. And therefore, if we feel badly, we can feel better if we just do the work. The truth will do what? It will set you free. And what is the truth? We are created in the likeness and image of our creator. Not us, everyone, is created in the likeness and image of our creator. Imbued by that creator with the potential of our creator himself. And as scripture says, we are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus to our understanding and to our life. Jesus was always telling us that we could be like him because he understood the right relationship of the kingdom, the right understanding of the kingdom. He understood the reality and the truth of God being ever present regardless of circumstances, and he loved everybody. And the world, he said he didn't come to change, but as he changed his way of thinking and others changed their way of thinking, the world was and is the, the magnificent, wonderful place that it is. These are the best of times, and you and I have the greatest opportunities when we have the greatest difficulties, and the affirmation assures us that we are filled with infinite possibilities. So go out and do something that's infinitely possible, and uh, you will surprise yourself. But if you go out and believe the things that you have believed for so long, then things will be quite the same as they have always been for you and for those around you. But it doesn't have to be that way. We can see beyond appearances. We can embrace the teaching. We can live the kingdom. We can allow love to be manifest, and we can allow our minds to be one with the divine mind. And ask yourself the question, how do I feel? Because the way that you feel and our emotions and our thoughts and what comes out in our physical lives in the way that we feel is telling us loudly and clearly how right our thinking is about God, our neighbors, and ourselves. Mm -hmm.